I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome to Light On, Light Through, episode 92, Amazon versus Hachette. I side with Amazon. Well, the dispute between Amazon and the traditional publisher Hachette has dominated book talk on and off the web and off the web as well on television and newspapers for the past few months. There have been pieces about it in the New York Times, in Salon, highly biased, I think, against Amazon. Even more disturbing to me is that people who I think should know a little better have been attacking Amazon. A science fiction writer I admire very much, Ursula Le Guin. People like the one and only Colbert of the Colbert Report. And in some ways, uh, most distressingly, Paul Krugman. And the reason why I say that is I always agreed with Krugman, a Nobel laureate in economics, by the way, that inflation was not such a serious problem. And even more impressive, I thought, is Krugman cites Isaac Asimov's Foundation Trilogy as one of the most inspiring things in his life. In fact, he says that set him on the road to becoming an economist. So I have a pretty high opinion of Paul Krugman, but I disagreed completely with his recent article in the New York Times in which he says Amazon is hurting Americans with its policy. So I'll get to that in a minute. Let's first talk about what the dispute is that has been receiving so much attention. The gist of it is that Amazon wants a better deal from big publishers selling books on Amazon's site in terms of how much of a cut Amazon gets from its online retail sales of books. The big publishers are resisting. Amazon retaliated in the case of Hachette by making its books a little more difficult for people to buy. So searches for Hachette books on Amazon can result in advisories that best-selling books, which normally ship immediately, can be subject to a several-week wait. And among authors who have been affected by that are J.K. Rowling, James Patterson, and many other well-known authors. Perhaps that's why so many well-known authors are coming out against Amazon. But one thing that's important to keep in mind if you know about the book business, and it is very much a business, is that traditional bookstores always gave certain books and certain publishers favored treatment in terms of where the books were displayed. You ever wonder why it is when you walk into a Barnes & Noble, for example, you see certain books right out there as soon as you walk into the store, staring you right in the face? I think that happened once with one of my novels that I had published by Tor about 15 years ago. But the fact of the matter is, the reason why that happens is that publishers get favor treatment because they give the bookstores sweeter deals. Sometimes they even pay for that privilege. So it's not as if in a traditional bookstore all books have equal display. And that's why I think there's really nothing wrong or untoward about Amazon deciding which books it wants to give prominent display to. Now let me also say that I can well understand the frustration of would-be buyers and readers of Hachette's titles. No one likes delays, especially those that arise from a contract negotiation. But I nonetheless side completely with Amazon on this one. And I say this as an author who has been published by major worldwide publishers, as well as small presses. And so I have really knowledge of both sides of this book industry. 
Now, let me say that the treatment I've received from my publication as an author by small presses, for example, by Josara Media out of Texas, and the publication of my books through Josara Media on Amazon has been great. I receive nearly instant reports of sales of my Kindle books, crystal clear earning statements, monthly payments of my earnings that have been accurate to the penny. And sadly, I can't say the same about my experience as an author with traditional publishers who are accustomed to paying once a year, twice if you're lucky, and whose royalty statements would give an accountant a headache and certainly often give me one. And, in some ways, even worse, in fact, definitely worse, the royalty statements are not always accurate. Now, I believe I've eventually received every cent that was due to me from my traditional publishers, and by the way, these publishers are in their areas the biggest in the world, huge international companies. So I've eventually gotten every cent that was owed to me, but I don't appreciate the errors in the first place and the effort it took me to get them corrected. Now maybe best-selling authors get better treatment from their publishers than a mid-list author like me. I couldn't say. But I do know that traditional publishers come from a tradition in which they think the author should be thrilled that her or his book is being published and be happy for the fractional part of the sales that the author receives as a royalty. In other words, the better deal that Hachette is trying to get from Amazon will likely not make much difference to most authors with traditional publishers. It'll probably make a difference to a star like Stephen Colbert. It may make a difference to Paul Krugman. I don't know what deal he has with his publisher. But for most authors with traditional publishers, they receive such a small royalty anyway that even if Hachette gets a better deal from Amazon, these traditional authors will see next to nothing of that increase. Now, apropos of what I've been saying about best-selling authors, one of the things that I've studied and written about and teach about is the use of propaganda to convince the world at large or people who are semi-informed, less than fully informed, and by the way, all of us are less than fully informed about most issues. But what the propagandist does in an attempt to sway and convince those people is employ a series of techniques which have been identified for decades, as a matter of fact, Uh, Some of these techniques were identified as early as 1938 by the Institute for Propaganda Analysis. And among these techniques is something called appeal to authority. And as that phrase suggests, what the propagandist does is it brings someone into the argument who seems like he or she has some kind of special knowledge about the situation under discussion. And the propagandist thereby hopes to convince everyone else that the propagandist and the propagandist points are correct. So, what does Stephen Colbert, what does Ursula Le Guin, what does James Patterson, what does any of these best-selling authors any of these iconic figures really know about the publishing business and in particular the issues under discussion and debate that have so acrimoniously arisen between Amazon and Hachette. If they haven't published directly on Amazon, 
either published themselves or worked with a small press and in that way have come to know exactly how Amazon operates. My strong guess is that these big name authors have almost no knowledge of what it's like to work directly with Amazon. And so their attack on Amazon is based to some extent just on one side of this experience, that is the traditional publishing side. And with little or no experience on the independent side. In contrast, if you look at a writer like Hugh Howey, who has established a very successful career publishing independently on Amazon through the Kindle, starting with his very successful novella series, Wool, unsurprisingly, Hugh Howey is a supporter of Amazon because he knows what it's like to work with Amazon and he appreciates the advantages of working with Amazon. In the end, I think unless you are an author who has had any trouble or difficulty in getting a traditional publisher, and my guess is many of these famous authors have not had that much difficulty and actually I didn't have that much difficulty either but I've always been haunted by stories of authors who have had that kind of difficulty for example John Kennedy Toole author of A Confederacy of Dunces a world-renowned, very respected book now, but tragically the author committed suicide after it had been turned down by a traditional publisher. Now it's not the publisher's fault, it's not anyone's fault when someone commits suicide. Ultimately it's the person who takes his or her own life who has that responsibility. But it certainly didn't help and it puts in high relief the need that authors have to get their works out to the public. And it's been Amazon, not the traditional publishing business, that has finally, at long last, spoken to this need. Amazon has revolutionized the book world with its Kindle editions and the new relationships it's made with authors. And the essence of these relationships is that an author, upon finishing a book, any written work, can within hours get that work available and out to the world. That to me is as a profound development, and I've talked about this and written about this in many places. I see that as a development on a par with the invention of the printing press and the alphabet thousands of years earlier. Because all three of those things, the alphabet, the printing press, and now the Kindle, have utterly changed the relationship between authors and readers, and in a good way, by allowing the author in all three cases, and now most prominently by the Kindle, to get his or her words out to the world. Now understandably, the old guard may be a little less than comfortable with this. That's understandable. But what I have to speak out against is this concerted attack on Amazon as if it were the devil incarnate, when in fact, in the publishing world, it has accomplished something that every author in his or her heart and soul would want unless they were fortunate enough to get a deal from a
traditional publisher. For too long, our world has been limited by the gatekeepers in the traditional publishing industry. Limited by the New York Times, because it's now much easier to get your ideas out there when all there were were newspapers, and if you wanted to get your ideas out there, you had to do what? Submit an op-ed piece to the New York Times? Now you can write a blog. Well, Amazon is doing that for traditional publishing. And I have no doubt that that's the way of the future. And I'm very glad to be part of that. The Light on Light Through podcast. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still code about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries.